welcome to HITC Sport. All right, the Champions League season is back upon us. Chelsea versus Real Madrid and PSG versus Man City. For most of you, these are a mouth-watering set of fixtures, right? You're probably salivating from the nose, utterly drooling over the quality of football we're about to watch this week. See, in the Champions League, yeah, we'll gladly rip off both nipples to even get a glimpse of these games. But when they're advertised for the Super League, oh, everyone then treats the prospect of these glamour ties as if they've just been told to give their grandmother a bath. But listen, while I am the king of predictions, yeah, I'll get the salary sticks later in the week. Let's just take a look at these two Champions League semi-finals and just see who's going to go through. I know, my last set of predictions were so hopelessly bad, but now, come on, all I have to do is just predict the correct two teams going to the final. And there's only four of them left, so... Come on, surely can't be that hard. All right, let's see what's first up on the menu. Chelsea versus Real Madrid. It's weird. Roman Abramovich bought the club nearly 20 years ago, with the aim surely being to make Chelsea the English Galacticos. In his own twisted, perverted fantasy, he was probably expecting to rival Real Madrid for the status of Europe's top dogs. He probably thought they'd be competing with them in the Champions League every goddamn season. When he arrived in town, Chelsea was trying to snatch the likes of Ronaldo, David Beckham, and Luis Figo out of the Bernabeu. To their rich, fat cat Spanish cousins, they probably viewed the threat of Chelsea as just be that annoying pretender with cash in their ears but have absolutely zero experience of dealing with the big boys. Essentially what boxing probably thinks of Jake Paul right now. Ever since Abramovich started swinging his wallet around from the end of his knob, Madrid were probably foaming at the mouth, just getting ready to utterly strangle the life out of this annoying new English loudmouth in a puddle of fermented horse wee. And they nearly did it in the first season. If Madrid had just beaten Monaco in the quarterfinals, they'd have played Chelsea in the semi-finals, but... They missed their chance. And so no, weirdly, these two have never met under Abramovich's tenure. They've only ever played each other three times in their history. And none since August 1998, where Clarence Sadoff was facing a midfield battle with a London street hopper like Dennis Wise. How have they managed to avoid each other for so long? It makes no sense. Especially when they played Barcelona about 57 times. So it's a weird stat. Madrid have never beaten Chelsea in their history. Ever. The likes of John Terry and Frank Lampard will go to their grave without ever having experienced what it feels like to compete against truly the biggest club of planet Earth. It's just a bit weird. Anyway, this time we'll see the return of Eden Hazard and Thibaut Courtois to West London. Listen, make no mistake about it. If there were Chelsea fans allowed in Stamford Bridge, they'd probably be chucking empty beer cans at the goalie's head. To them, Courtois is a treacherous snake that they'd gladly see burn to the stake in the streets of West London. But Hazard, oh, it's just so sad. For so many young Chelsea fans, this guy is their modern day Gianfranco Zola. You know, the special type of wing wizard that probably bore their grandkids about. And make no mistake about it, what is a Stamford Bridge? I think people forget just how good he was. 110 10 goal score from the wing, countless assists, two Premier League titles, an FA Cup, EFL Cup, two Europa Leagues. When this guy was on it, he was utterly ridiculous. And he also had a weird finish for trying to kick lumps out of 13-year-old Welsh ball boys, but on the pitch, he was unbelievable. And when people try to say that Mourinho doesn't know how to use talented attacking midfielders, oh, I'm sorry, please rip out your tongue and feed it to the pigeons. Under Mourinho, this guy was utterly insane. 36 goals across two seasons, Premier League champion. Yeah, Joe's used to shout him for not tracking back, but still, going forward, you cannot argue with those numbers. But now, even at just 30 years of age. He's just some fat tub of wet custard with just four goals for him. Four goals for Madrid. He cost 100 million pounds two years ago. I don't care that he's had his injury problems. Yes, he has. But maybe if, if he just stopped dipping his sandwiches in plates of butter. Maybe if he didn't drink jars of Nutella before bed. And maybe if he didn't frequent the Burger King drive through every other afternoon. Maybe he then wouldn't be tripping over his own love handles in the shower. Let's not forget, this guy was supposed to be Cristiano Ronaldo's heir. His successor. His heir to the throne. He was playing for his idols in it. Zidane. This was supposed to be the perfect matchup. Good grace, he moved to Spain to finally win a Ballon d'Or. Now he's being outshone by a kid who's only just got braces off his teeth. Should Chelsea be worried by Madrid? Not really. Yeah, I know they're unbeaten in 13 league games in Spain. Great. But am I the only one who thinks they're about as threatening as a toothless goldfish? This is Real Madrid here, and they've had five goalless draws this season. No, no. Three of the last four games have been nil-nil draws. They were beaten by Shakhtar Donetsk twice this season. We were dumped out of the Copa del Rey by a bunch of Spanish milkmen. They say Zidane is doing a good job. Is he? Is he really? Because I can't be the only one who remembers that before Halloween, he was outclassed by Javi Garcia at Valencia. You know, the former Watford coach who lost an FA Cup final by six got them goals. Apparently he's not good enough to coach the likes of Troy Deeney. And yet he still manages to find a way to stick four past Real Madrid. Yeah, they're only two points off the title, but they're also sitting just one point ahead of Sevilla, coached by Julian Lopetegui. You know, a guy they clearly viewed as a managerial wet omelette, bidding him after just ten games. You're currently one point better than your successor, Zizou. Why? Why did you come back? You're never gonna win the Champions League with this Real Madrid team. Honestly, if you do, 
I'll butter my entire hair with a bread knife. As for Chelsea, listen, Thomas Tuchel has been a good appointment. But don't you tell me he suddenly brings attacking, attacking football that makes Abramovich wet at the knees. We all know the Russians' wet dream is Guardiola-esque football. And the ironic thing is, if he wanted that, instead of pining after Pep for about six years straight, he, he should have just worked on promoting Brendan Rodgers from his backroom staff. Then they'd be playing insane football. Under Tuchel, you've overseen four goalless draws. Good grace, between these two clubs, they've had a combined 12 nil-nil draws this season. Listen, I reckon Chelsea will grind out another goalless draw tomorrow night, leaving Madrid to utterly splutter and choke like a toddler eating a spoonful of Lego. As for the return leg, it's going to be another shut-up job. I'm predicting Chelsea will grind out a 1-0 win courtesy of a late Mason Mount winner inside the last 10 minutes. You'll see lads, Tuchel is heading back to his second consecutive Champions League final. And a problem which will think about goddamn time, he's been investing funds since 2003 and they've only ever competed in one Champions League final and even that they were outclassed for about 89 minutes. Wasn't their plan to win the goddamn thing every year? Good Christ, they've played in more Europa League finals than they have Champions League ones. Yeah, surely smiling in all the pictures. But for a club with massive aspirations and a bottomless bank account, then playing Thursday night football, it's like a former CEO of Apple being forced to apply for a job sweeping toilets at Greg's. All right, what else we've got? We've got PSG and Man City. And for the footballing purists out there, they'll probably sooner stick their head in a lawnmower than acknowledge or accept that this actually exists as a Champions League semi-final. Listen, this is the example of that futuristic match you'd have put, you'd have played on the computer game that looked like a laughable prop like 15 years ago when both these clubs were bottom half irrelevant, nobodies in their respective leagues. But now they both won the lottery, chucked cash around, and show financial fair play the same amount of respect that Joe Jackson showed his kids. But what makes these semi-finals so special is that these aren't oversaturated ties we've seen every year for six years straight. I mean, how many times do we have to see Chelsea versus Barcelona or Bayern Munich versus Real Madrid before we start to bleed from the eyes? We've already established Chelsea haven't met Madrid since the 90s, and City and PSG have only ever played each other three times in their history, with the first being a forgettable nil-nil draw in the UEFA Cup group stage match back in December 2008, when the likes of Tal Benheim, Mattia Kaysman, and Chet Evans were all on the pitch. Hold up your hands, how many of you actually remember that game? I'd be surprised if it was more than five. For Man City fans, to think that these two clubs will one day be competing for a spot in the Champions League final. All sorts of mental when we're being treated to the likes of Benjani, Fabrice Pancrat, and Dries Vassell sharing a pitch. For Man City fans, they spent the last 10 years telling everyone until they were blue in the face that they actually don't care about the Champions League. That UEFA are a corrupt bunch of parasites who shouldn't even be given the authority to operate an under nine swimming team. I mean, neither should my uncle, but that's for different reasons. Pep Guardiola versus Mauricio Pochettino in the Champions League. The last time that happened, it gave us one of the most thrilling Champions League quarterfinals I've ever seen in my life. Don't underestimate Poch just because he's a silverware virgin. The guy knows how to get under Pep's skin. Honestly, Daniel Levy must be sitting on his couch watching this game and silently sticking spoons up his nose. Anything to distract himself from the fact that he sacked the man who was looking to reach his second Champions League final in three seasons. While he, as a virtual child stuck in the dugout, Ryan Mason's barely old enough to drive. Make no mistake about it, Chris Powell is the one calling the shots at Tottenham right now, but because of the club's delusions of grandeur, to the point that they think they're a massive club worthy of the Super League, they know it would be too embarrassing to admit that they've just replaced a three-time Premier League winner with a coach recently sacked by Southend United. So they'll just try and market Mason as this Dougie Hauser wonder kid football coach. You know, the English Julian Nagelsmann, right? Honestly, that decision to sack Mourinho, it honestly leaves me with a sick taste of cat fur in my mouth. And that's not just because I woke up this morning and decided to lick my cat from head to toe. Anyway, the other mouth-watering attacking talent on show in this match. Stick the likes of Angel Di Maria, Riyad Mahrez, Neymar, Phil Foden, Kylian Mbappe, Kevin De Bruyne on the same pitch and honestly watching that, it can't be safe. It must be like staring directly into the sun. I'm convinced there's only a small minority of human beings on planet Earth who can stomach that without winding up in a coma. Because that's too much sickeningly good attacking talent on the pitch. Where's the catch? It must be like eating 12 Easter eggs at once. Uh, it's just it's just too much of a good thing, right? And you know what? I'm going to go for an utterly mental 3-3 draw in Paris. And don't you act like you don't want that result. We all want it. We all want to see an avalanche of goals, another spectacle of football. Please don't wind up as an anticlimactic bore draw. So yeah, I'll go for a bang 3-3 draw in Paris before a city utterly splutter and choke in the second leg, losing 2-0 at home. I've said it once and I've said it again. Manchester City are Champions League bottlers. And so yes, last season Tuchel went to a Champions League final with PSG. Now he'll go to a Champions League final against PSG. Be a bit awkward. It's like winding up in a cinema to watch the new James Bond movie before finding out you're accidentally sitting next to your ex-wife and a new husband. Again, it's enough to probably make you want to shove popcorn in your ears before blinding yourself in both eyes with the straw from your drink. Anyway, that's it for us. Let me know in the comments below. What do you think? What do you think is going to happen in these semi-finals? Let me know in the comments below. Is Man City going to choke? 
Is the tight are Chelsea gonna beat Madrid? Let me know in the comment section below if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, I'll talk to you in a while.